And now, from 12 Studios, this is News 12 Now. Today is Thursday, July 11th. Welcome to News 12 Now. I'm Kylie Dudman. New this afternoon, actress Shelley Duvall has died. Her lifetime partner, Dan Gilroy, says she died at her home in Blanco, Texas, due to complications from diabetes. Her career spanned three decades. One of her most notable roles is as Wendy Torrance, the wife of Jack Nicholson's character in Stanley Kerbach's The Shining. She retired from acting in 2002, returning to her home state of Texas. Shelley Duvall was 75 years old. An ultralight plane crashed into Lake Carl Blackwell on Saturday. According to the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, there were two occupants and no serious injuries. The occupants were picked up by boat and the plane was removed shortly after. The FAA will be investigating the details of the crash. President Joe Biden is holding a solo press conference today, his first since November, to conclude the NATO summit in Washington, D.C. It'll be one of his biggest public tests since last month's unsteady debate performance, which has caused alarm among Democrats on Capitol Hill and has raised questions about whether he should be the party's 2024 presidential nominee. CBS's Natalie Brand has more. President Biden has back-to-back -back meetings with foreign allies as the 75th anniversary NATO summit concludes today in Washington, D.C. Tonight, his first solo press conference since last November will be scrutinized amid growing calls from Capitol Hill to now Hollywood for him to bow out of the presidential race. Vermont's Peter Welch became the first Democratic senator to call on the president to withdraw. Others have signaled they're worried about November. I've talked to people across Ohio. They have legitimate questions about whether the president should continue his campaign. Three top Biden advisors are heading to the Hill today to try and reassure Senate Democrats. And CBS News has learned that House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries plans to convey the concerns of his members directly to the president. We're continuing to have conversations with each other, and those have been candid, comprehensive, and clear-eyed. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi warned Wednesday that time is running short. The decision is the president's. Two senior Democrats also tell CBS News that there's concern donations could dry up. But despite the uncertainty, the president and his closest allies say he remains committed to staying in the race, arguing he's the best shot at beating former President Trump. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Our main story this week is going to be the heat that continues to build across the area. We've been kind of slowly stair-stepping up on the day-to-day. -day. And as you can see, several of us running a few degrees warmer than yesterday, although not too many spots actually registering an increase. But that's the thing. It's uh, getting there. As high pressure builds, and a lot of us are already into the 90s here. So it's only going to be getting warmer as we go through the rest of the day today. Eventually, we're going to be hitting the mid-90s. So definitely... Uh, not great considering that this is warmer than average and just the beginning of our latest heat wave. Now we could be seeing maybe a stray shower thunderstorm over the next several hours here, but most of us stay dry. And then we eventually do get to the triple digits by the time we get to the start of next week. So not necessarily looking like record breaking heat, but definitely uh, pretty toasty for the time of the year, but there could be some changes a little bit down the line in terms of the extended forecast. We'll break it all down here in just a little bit. Until then, back to you, Kylie. Thank you, Brian. Well, days after Hurricane Barrel made landfall in Texas, hundreds of thousands of people in the Houston area are still without power. And one company, Centerport Energy, has faced intense scrutiny over its preparations and response to the storm. Jeremy Rogalowski spoke with a company executive to talk about the criticism of their performance. Two full days after Barrel left the Houston area, Centerpoint says it has met its initial power restoration goal. We know that we have never before restored a million customers in 48 hours. But a million is only half the battle, and company vice president Dan Carroll says the deeper you get into disaster recovery, the pace of repairs will begin to slow. You can expect the second half of the storm for the run rate not to be a million every 48 hours, which is basically what we've done thus far. So could we be looking at next week with people still out of power? Uh, we're not ready to announce that just yet. We questioned Carol about the decision not to request more mutual aid workers from out of town. 
After Barrel hit, Center Point scrambled to get thousands more external boots on the ground. Was it a money issue? Not at all. You could have called in more, but you didn't. That's right. Money had nothing to do with it? No, absolutely not. It does not come into the calculus when making these decisions. The company VP maintains when it comes to pre-hurricane preps, he would not have done anything differently. Looking forward, we also asked about Centerpoint's newly released outage map and complaints from 11 News viewers who live in a green or supposedly energized area but are still without power. What good is a map if it's not accurate? Yeah, it, we're working on the accuracy right now. We track it consistently. We're making adjustments to the map as we speak. The other thing I want customers to know is even if you see yourself in that green on the map, don't worry. We know you're out of power and we are going to get to you. And that was Jeremy Rogalski reporting. Well, Grayson County drivers, heads up. More construction coming to Highway 75 and FM 691 this week. TxDOT says the north and southbound U-turn lanes at the intersection will close on Friday. Crews will then begin work on the middle portions of the new US 75 bridge. There's currently no timetable for when it will reopen, but for drivers who do turn there and make the U-turn, the fix is quite simple. Just turn on to 1691 and then make another left at the next light. The Sherman Police Department and Texoma Community Center are teaming up on a mental health response program. The goal is to provide better and faster care to those in a mental health crisis. In the past, when officers responded to a mental health call, they would take that person to the emergency room for evaluation. So in this new program, when the officer determines that there's a mental health um, aspect to the call that they're on, they immediately dispatch out our team from their police department. So we're able to do that assessment in the field. The on-site evaluations keep people out of the emergency room and jail if they don't need to be there. It also frees up SPD officers to respond to other emergencies. Another place offering special services to a hurting population, a shelter in Ada known to provide many resources to people without homes is rewarded with a $7,500 boost. The money will go towards their street outreach program. This program focuses on getting resources like sleeping bags to those without homes, especially in the winter when temperatures drop drastically, where the cold can become life threatening. To learn more about what you can do to help keep this running program, click on this story on our website at KXII.com. Well, it's been six years since our nation grieved the loss of 17 students and faculty to a mass shooting at a high school in Parkland, Florida. One of those students is Alyssa Alfed, the namesake of a new law Oklahoma Governor Stitt signed Tuesday. Alyssa's law mandates the use of emergency alert systems in public schools across the state in an attempt to enhance school safety. We'll have more about this on News 12 on our website at KXII.com. Well, another scary moment for airline passengers, this time on an American Airlines flight after at least one tire blew out just before takeoff. It happened on the runway at Florida's Tampa International Airport yesterday. Elaine Quahano has more. In a matter of seconds, a routine takeoff turned into an emergency. As a tire blew out on American Airlines Flight 590 from Tampa to Phoenix Wednesday morning, damaging other tires in the process. We had a blown tire and we're going to be needed to throw 10 degrees. 174 passengers and six crew members were on board the plane, a 25 year old Boeing 737, as the flight was aborted on the runway just over a minute after it had been cleared for takeoff. And all of a sudden we heard a boom, boom. Renan Galindo was a passenger on the flight. The left side of the plane, the tires were flat. On the right side of the plane, the tires were shredded. American Airlines said there were no injuries, adding that the passengers deplaned safely, were bused back to the terminal, and were put on a replacement flight. It comes after a wheel fell from a United Airlines flight during takeoff in Los Angeles Monday. That plane, a 29-year-old Boeing 757, continued to its destination and landed safely. 
That followed a similar case in March when another wheel fell as a 22-year-old United Boeing 777 departed from San Francisco, damaging cars in a parking lot just off the runway. That incident and several others led the FAA to launch a safety compliance review of United, which is ongoing. The airline's CEO has said the incidents, quote, have sharpened our focus. Elaine Quijano, CBS News. Thank you for watching today's News 12 Now. Make sure to subscribe so you find out why Texoma turns to us. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, where you'll see more social media exclusive content. Want more News 12 Now? Watch us live every weekday through the KXII app on your phone or TV and through our website.